Welcome to the Redeemer Podcast. I'm your host, Zach, and today we are going to be discussing the international application here at Redeemer for international students. So these are students applying outside of Canada. I am joined by Redeemer's international admissions counselor, Annika, and we're going to talk about the entire application process, some of the things you need to know if you're applying as an international student. Check out timestamps below. If it is your first time here, make sure to like and subscribe, turn on that notification bell, share this episode with a friend, and check out some of our other episodes that explore various aspects of Redeemer, Christian education, and so much more. Thank you for making us part of your day, and with that, let's go. I am delighted today to have Redeemer's International Admissions Counselor, Annika, with me on the podcast today. Annika, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Zach. I really appreciate being here. Yeah, absolutely. I knew this is an episode that's very important. Anyone who's watching or listening, do check out timestamps in the description below. Uh, We're going to get through a bunch of different topics. If you are an international student, uh, from outside of North America or Amer- or the United States of America, the- this is the episode for you. You absolutely want to listen to the whole thing. Uh, there is going to be a segment at the end that's geared specifically for American students. Uh, just So just take note of that. But all this information, very relative. And uh, I'm excited to you know nerd out a little bit about international applications. You ready, Annika? So am I. I'm so excited. This is going to be so good. <laughs> this is going to be great. This is going to be a great episode. Okay. So let, let's start with this, Annika. If you're an international student overseas in maybe Africa or Asia or Europe, or, yep. or maybe you're, you're in South, South America, what does the international application start with? Great question. Um, So the international application essentially starts like any other application, whether you're domestic in America or across the sea, Um, you are going to go to redeemer.ca slash apply. You are going to start an application, an online application form with us. Super easy to do. You're going to fill out your uh, biographical information. So just tell us your uh, legal name um, as well as what country of citizenship you have. Um, The reason why we ask for this is so that I as your immigration advisor can help you so that I can make sure that the information that I give you is relevant to your situation as well. Um, Yeah, that's the first thing to start with. And the online application form will also ask for references. So have a teacher or uh, a principal who can speak to your experiences being a student for the academic reference. And then we'll also ask for a faith mentor reference. Um, So this could be a a youth pastor that you have. If you're not connected to a church, it could also be a faith mentor. Uh, We typically ask that it is not a parent or a family member. Uh, That is a really important piece uh, for that. And then we also ask for just a personal statement, essentially just answering the question like why you want to come to Redeemer. Um, Yeah, it's a great way to just get started, getting a little bit more information um, about you. As soon as you create a profile, like we are notified as well. So I'll be able to, yeah, you'll get emails from me right away um, asking you questions to see if there's anything that I can help you with. Um, the additional pieces in that, sorry, I know Zach, you only asked me for what no, to start keep with. Keep going, keep going. It just kind of like all rolls in one. <laughs> so the second portion of it is your transcripts. So depending on what country you're coming from, this is going to be a little bit different, but every single uh, high school or secondary school that you have attended, we need official transcripts coming directly from the high school that you attended. So it cannot come from students. Um, this is just in academic integrity purposes. We have this as a um, institution-wide policy. We cannot accept them directly from students. Um, Yeah, so that will have to come directly from the high school. If you're coming from Africa, for example, uh, a lot of the time, if you're coming from countries like uh, Nigeria or Liberia, we are asking for the WAIC, so the WAEC, uh, which is the West African Examination Council. Um, If you are coming from Uh, Like if you're taking the international baccalaureate, like we're going to ask for the actual diploma, we need those board results to be sent to us as well, directly from the board. Um, It kind of depends on like what your academic history is like. If you have a combination where you're taking some courses in the IB and then you're taking some courses in uh, the Cambridge system, like obviously it's going to look a little bit different, but like we accept all 
um, of those. So we're more than happy to like, yeah, walk with you to see what exactly, uh, if there's exact courses that you need and everything else like that. Um, and then the final piece is the application fee. So for international students who do not hold um, citizenship in North America, so you're not a United States citizen and you're not a Canadian citizen, you will be required to pay 150 Canadian dollars. Um, and this is paid through credit card. So it is very important that international students have access to one just because um, uh, if they're coming to Canada, we just want to make sure that you have an additional um, means of support for yourself. So um, that is like the overall generalized form of like what an international application would. Uh, no, you, yeah. you did a great okay. job summarizing that. And just to summarize your <laughs> summarization, start the application redeemer.ca, yeah. uh, fill out that application. Mm -hmm. There is a $150 application fee if you're outside of North America. And then uh, you'll need to contact your high schools or if you've uh, you know, gone to other post-secondary institutions and the, your transcripts will need to be sent directly to us from the school. It cannot come from the student uh, themselves just mm -hmm. for academic integrity purposes. But what about if they're studying at a university or a college, like a post-secondary school overseas? Yeah, great question. So this is where the World Education Services come in. So they are actually a notary and also an official translator. Um, they are very well known uh, in Canada as well. They're actually one of the top leading um, notaries in uh, the country. So uh, if you go to a post-secondary institution located outside of North America, you will have to send your transcripts in through West. Um, if they are not, it is part of the requirements. And so your application will not be deemed completed otherwise. Um, the important thing to know is that we always look for a course by course evaluation. So there are a few different ones. I know that another option that some students try to do is a document by document that it's not what we're looking for. We need a course by course evaluation. The reason for this is because we are looking to offer you transfer credit. And now I understand that like World Education Services, it has its own cost. Um, however, it is definitely worth it because if you're thinking about like maybe, I think it's $120 right now. If you're paying the $120 for the West evaluation versus like the $300 that you're paying per credit at Redeemer, like it actually is like way less. So it's just important to, uh, yeah, keep that in mind as you're thinking about like, oh, it's not worth my time. To be honest, it will be because it also reduces your time at Redeemer. So you don't have to pay for the full four years of tuition. We could get you like three and a half, like two years, like it kind of depends, again, it kind of depends on the student situation, what your academic history is. Um, but again, we work with you um step by step on that as well awesome yeah no that, that's if you're a transfer student that's definitely worth your time uh and and resources and i i think you know and i'm sure we'll get into this when we talk about deadlines but the earlier you can apply mm -hmm. the better right and e oh, even if better. you can't complete better. the application right away doing as much as you can as soon as possible helps set yourself up for success if you're an international student would you agree with that Oh, definitely. And I think like as you're applying as an international student, you're not only thinking about like academics, like obviously, yes, that's why you want to come to university, um, but you're coming to Canada. So that's a whole other thing in and of itself. You're coming to a whole different country. You may have never come to Canada before. Maybe you have, but now you're staying here on a long, on a more long term yeah. basis. So there's a lot more like things that you need to consider as you're thinking about studying abroad. Like for a lot of international students that I have worked with in the past like two and a half years it's a lot of like um what kind of community what kind of support like who else is um on campus like from my country like there's a lot of different um aspects that you really should be thinking about and so the sooner that you do it the more conversations like that I could have with you that I can connect you with other people on campus um so that you can actually have a better idea of like what it actually looks like to be a student at Redeemer. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, well, well, maybe that's a that's a good segue. Could we talk about what are some important deadlines for international students to be aware of? Yeah, for sure. So 
There are a lot of different um, ones to consider. So if you are a student coming directly from high school, uh, it does not matter on your state of citizenship, but if you're coming directly from high school, we have a offer of $100 textbook credit to our on-campus bookstore. So if you complete your application by December 15th of 2023, you'll be able to uh, be eligible for that. You don't have to like submit anything for it, um, like in terms of like an essay, but you do need to submit a complete completed application. Mm -hmm. And a completed application, again, is like the online application form, the application fee, and all official transcripts and other documents that we require. Um, and any questions that you have about that, like, again, like, I'm very readily accessible, like, you're more than welcome to connect with me about that. Um, that, that is one that's like kind of an extra bonus for um, students com coming directly out of high school. The other um, one that I would say is probably February 28th. Um, this is our financial aid uh, application deadline for maximum consideration. Right. So kind of like what Zach was saying before, it is so important to start sooner rather than later. Um, coming as an international student, it is a financial commitment and I don't wanna shy away from that. Like finances are a very important part as you're considering uh, traveling abroad. Um, and yeah, again, like you're coming to a different country potentially for up to four years. So we wanna make sure that you can actually afford to do that. And one way that we do uh, try to help our students is through scholarships, bursaries, um, yeah, and just other financial aid opportunities uh, that we have here at Redeemer University. So really, the sooner that you apply for the financial aid, the better. You won't be able to start a financial aid application until after you start an application to apply to Redeemer. I hope that makes sense. That's a lot of like terminology, but um, it is like really important to keep that in mind. For international students, May 1st is the application deadline every single year. So uh, for fall 2024, so that's September 2024, the deadline to apply is May 1st, 2024. So it's really important that you have a completed application submitted by that date. For students that have submitted by that time, we process those applications like like so quickly. It is absolutely insane to me. Um, but we do do it within like a week or two because we want to give you enough time to actually pay the enrollment deposit if you are admitted because the enrollment deposit deadline is May 31st right. of 2024. So the reason why we do this is because uh, when you want to study in Canada is because you actually need a study permit to come and study inside the country. This is not to say that it will give you access to come, like there's a lot of different terminology there, but the study permit essentially is like the uh, Canadian government giving you authorization to study in Canada for a certain amount of time, which will be as long as like your program. So at Redeemer, we offer like full-time, uh, if you're studying on a full-time basis, sorry, um, a four-year bachelor's degree. And so with that, that's what you'll be able to study. So typically your study permit will be off like, uh, authorizing you to study for that four-year time span. Okay, so just to kind of reiterate, uh, February 28th, financial aid deadline. It's important to have uh, your application submitted. Uh, so not just your application, but there's also a financial aid form after you submit the application. And then the next big deadline is May 1st. You need to have your application submitted before then. Uh, in order to have you know enough time to get a, obtain a study permit and work with, um, you know, uh, it's, it's Canada Immigration, is it? Or... Mm -hmm. yeah, immigration oh, Canada. Get those mixed up. Immigration Canada. <laughs> yeah, this is why you're <laughs> in your role and I'm not in your role. Anyway, um, but no, you're all good. <laughs> so Zach. Immigration Canada, and it, it, it's in, uh, one. So as long as you're submitted before that May first and you'll receive an admissions decision from us really quickly. And then uh, what what is it? Um, I know that there's a couple of layers and you maybe can't speak to everything because part of it is Immigration Canada that, that has their own process that you, you that international students need to apply through. But can you maybe speak to mm -hmm. what is it that they need to do to apply for a study permit? Great question, Zach. I'm so excited that you asked this. Okay, so um, essentially what international students need to do is they need an official document from the institution that they're applying to to say that they have been accepted. 
So this is called the final offer of admission. It's a very formal um, way of saying that we have offered you a position to study at Redeemer University. So this will be released uh, not by me, but by, actually by our registrar's office. Um, so just to be aware that like when a final offer of admission is made, it actually takes part of three different departments to create one. So it does take a little bit of time. We try to do it as quickly as possible. Um, however, just like keep in mind that it can take a little bit of time. Um, the final offer of admission is one piece. The second piece that you'll need when you're when you're applying for your study permit is to have proof of uh, financial support. So you will need to provide uh, bank statements. If you've been offered any scholarships from Redeemer, that will already be stated on your final offer of admission. So that will be taken off your total amount. There's also a specific amount um, dependent on like if you're coming on your own, if you're coming with family, um, it kind of depends on how much, but typically they're asking that you have at least $10,000 Canadian um, and that you also have uh, the tuition for one full academic year. Um, and this is also to say that at Redeemer, we only admit students, international students on a full-time basis. The reason why we do this is because it also uh, kind of increases your probability of receiving a study permit. And it also allows you to work on or off campus. This is like depending on what your study permit says when you enter into Canada, but it is a great benefit to you, especially if you're thinking about like how to afford um, coming to Redeemer. Um, the financial support is one. If there's any, um, if you're a minor, for example, you will need a essentially a sponsor. Um, so someone who can act as your like emergency contact, like someone that you know who's already in Canada. So if you're a minor and you don't know anyone in Canada, um, it is actually a little bit harder to get to get into uh, Canada or to find someone um, just because we currently don't offer someone at Redeemer to be one. So that is a conversation that like I'm more than happy to have with students um, just because it is like and, a little bit and just to be more helpful clear, uh, in that way. Sorry to interrupt, just to be clear. Yeah. Um, what age is considered a yeah. minor in, in this process? <laughs> so this is where it's a little bit of a gray area. So if you're actually looking at the IRCC website and IRCC stands for Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada. So if you're looking on their website, uh, they will say that if you need to be 17. So if you're 17, then you're considered a minor. Um, there are some instances on the website that say, oh, 18 and younger or 18 or younger. So it kind of like if you're 18 and you're coming, like you're technically not a minor under like Canadian law. However, under immigration law, then it's it's a little bit of a gray area. So it kind of depends on like what your uh, situation is. So, for example, if you are applying to Redeemer University and you're only 17 years old, but you're going to be 18 by the time that you arrive in Canada, then you will not be considered right. a minor. If you if you are still 17 by the time that you come into Canada, you will be considered a minor and you will need that extra sponsorship. Um, in terms of like other documents you need, I'm trying to think of what else there would be. Those are like the two main things, but immigration like IRCC, also has their own application so just to be aware that like it like the pricing of the ircc application is not included in any of the prices that we offer as redeemer like that is very separate so the ircc application is 150 dollars. this also does not include any biometrics that you might have to submit um again it depends on your country it depends on like your situation um yeah, biometrics would probably be needed. Essentially what I mean by biometrics is like fingerprints um, and different things like okay. that. Okay, no, that, that's, you know, details to know that, that can come in the process. I know. Um, I could go as like detailed as you want me to. I know that sometimes I do have like a lot of details that is probably not helpful in the moment because it can seem very Yeah, no, and, and that's why we, we do this podcast to ho hopefully <laughs> kind of break down and, and tear down, you know, some of the veil, the veil about, you know, applying as an international student. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to, you know, again, so, you know, reiterate is that, you know, once you've applied to Redeemer um, and then you've been offered admission and then when you've paid your mm -hmm. deposit, that's when you would be issued a final offer of admission letter and you need that plus your bank statements uh, to, 
um, to as as you need to provide those to Immigration Canada. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, after, let's let's say okay, I'm an international student from outside of North America. I go through all that process. What's next? Do, mm -hmm. You know, I've accepted my offer of admission. I've paid my deposit and I, I've applied for my study permit. Uh, is Can I just show up to campus? <laughs> Great question. So I will say that like applying for a study permit in and of itself, um, I know can seem very daunting, um, but this is kind of like my own way of introducing my official role at Redeemer. Um, I am a regulated international student immigration mm -hmm. advisor. So what this means is that I have actually been, I've gone through the training I have passed and I actually have uh, the ability to help international students throughout the study permit process. So to clarify, this does not mean that I can fill out forms on behalf of a student. I cannot tell you exactly what to write. However, I can give you a little bit of guidance on like what, um, like how to fill in the specific forms because there will be different forms that you need to fill out. Um, if you need someone to look at your study permit um, itself as it's stamped in your passport and you're like, I don't know what this means. Like, what am I supposed to be looking for? Um, I can help you like kind of understand it so that it's not as overwhelming. Um, it's really important that like students know that because I think that is one of the most challenging parts of coming in as an international student. And it's just really important to know that like you're not going to be on your own in this at all. Um, I'm here to, again, like I'm here every step of the way just to like help out um, with like <laughs> the nitty gritty paperwork that needs to happen. Like it's just really important that uh, yeah, you have that kind of like settled and that you actually feel confident in it. Um, yeah, and that we can get it in on a timely basis. So, but essentially to go back to your uh, initial question of like, if uh, after you have already like um, submitted your study permit, sorry to Immigration Canada, I feel like I'm about to sneeze. No, it's not coming. Okay, so say that you're trying to come um, into Canada, what you will need is you do need a visa and you also need your study permit. So there is a very big difference between the documents that will allow you to enter into Canada versus the documents that will let you stay in okay. Canada. So the, yeah, so this is really important. So a temporary resident visa is essentially the reason how you can enter into Canada. And sometimes a lot of students think that they're like, oh, if I get my study permit, it counts as a visa. They're not the same. The study permit is the reason for you to stay in Canada. If you want to enter, you do need a visa or you need an electronic transportation application, I think it is, um, an ETA essentially. So you either need an ETA or a TRV for short, temporary resident visa. So those different terms are also on the IRCC website. Um, if there's anything, like any piece of advice I could give an international student is look thoroughly through that website because they do have a lot of answers for you. If there's anything like specific that you're not able to find, like again, like asking questions is the best way to do it. Um, but it is really important to understand that like you cannot just come to Canada on a yeah. whim. You will need to come in on some kind of visa. As you're thinking of coming um, to study and you have already started a study permit um, application and you're just awaiting a response, like don't go anywhere. <laughs> Like, don't come into Canada on a visitor visa. Um, stay where you are. Wait until your study permit has been approved. When your study permit is approved and it is issued to you, you automatically get a visa with it. So you, it's not a separate application. It actually comes together. So it's one less step for you to worry about. Um, and so, yeah. And then essentially what you'll be given uh, is a letter of introduction is the official term for it. And so it is to say that you have been initially approved by uh, Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada to study in Canada. So when you actually get to the border, that is when you get your official study permit. And so... <laughs> This is an overgeneralization because a few different countries have a few different ways of doing it. Um, but that is like the main overall standpoint I could give you um, of what the process could look like. So 
really my main my main advice is like stay put don't try to come into Canada any earlier than you have to it's also not advisable to come in like months before your start date I would only come in like maybe two weeks before your start date. The reason for this is because if you're coming into Canada any earlier, um, they will question as to like why you're coming earlier because it is a little bit odd because if you're not studying, you're also not allowed to work. Um, so you're really there as a visitor, but you're not coming in under a visitor visa. So there's like a lot of like different questions that could come up. So that's definitely um, one of my recommendations as well. Um, there was one more thing that I really wanted to say about this, and it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember. Well, and, and I'll just that's no, that, no, said. that's that's great information. And I'll just <laughs> I'll just clarify when you say border, like like crossing the border, that might mean <clears throat> you know with the United States, like a, a physical land border, or it also means an airport. Am I mm -hmm. correct in saying that? Yes. Yes, you are. Right, yeah. Just wanted to make sure. Um, and then, um, okay, mm -hmm. so uh, that you know that that's fantastic. And then we, we we'll just do a, a quick review of admission requirements for international students. They can all be found on our website. Check out the mm -hmm. links in the description below. But uh, for international students, uh, is there any requirements specifically for uh, English proficiency or, or anything like that? Yeah, great question. So we do actually have requirements um, for English proficiency. So any international student that starts an application with us will automatically have English language proficiency requirement as one of like their checklist items is essentially what we call it. Once you start an application and you see the checklist, you'll be able to understand a little bit better about what we mean. Um, but essentially it is required of all of your students. There are exemptions to this. So if you, for example, if you're studying in a high school in an English speaking country and all of your schooling has been done in English, we typically just ask for a letter from your school saying that it has been completed in English um, and then we can waive that for you. Um, I do not waive the English language proficiency until I see your right. transcript. Um, I do this because I need proof that you do meet the English language requirements. If you have had schooling um, that is not in English or you come from a country that does not have English as one of its um, major languages, sorry, as one of its national languages, um, we typically do ask for IELTS, that one's really easy. We also have TOEFL as an option. Um, we also have Duolingo. Uh, we do find that majority of our students do choose to do Duolingo. They can do it by themselves. It's still a proctored exam, so someone is still like monitoring your screen, um, but it's an easy way for you to prove that you can meet our English language requirements. Um, it's super easy to submit. And again, like you can just email me directly uh, if you have any questions about it or you want to submit a form because most of them I can verify online myself um so yeah it's just it's an easier way to do that that's a great question Zach. yeah no, I know I wanted to make sure we touched on that because I know I know that's a that's often uh something we get asked about um mm -hmm. so you know the, is, yeah. is there anything else for students outside of North America we've gone through a lot of information and again Everyone, feel free to email admissions mm -hmm. at redeemer.ca. The email is in the link in the description below. Uh, is there anything else that we need to touch on before we, we move on to American students? Yeah, great question. Um, I don't think this is necessarily specifically for international students, but um, I think it's also for American students as well. But one thing that I will say is that like when you're waiting for your study permit application to be approved and everything, like I would do your best to like get to learn more about like the school in and of itself if you haven't already. Um, so uh, in terms of like support when you're actually here, like we have a lot of different services that we offer at Redeemer. So like you have us in the admissions department who will help you like through your application process before you start as a student officially. But as soon as you are arrive on campus that's when um the people kind of switch and the roles kind of switch over so rather than referring to me you'll actually be talking to our associate dean of students um she was specifically hired to help international students and she is a great resource there's also international student advisors so current international students at redeemer they're typically in like their second, third, and fourth year they've had experience of being in the city of hamilton um of being a student at redeemer 
So they're also a really great resource. We also have different counseling services. If you need um, any academic help, there's also different workshops that happen. We have a learning strategist. Like there are just so many different um, opportunities for you to grow. And like, obviously like coming to Redeemer University, like faith is a really important part of that. So um, we have a lot of different ministries that are going on and off campus um, just to help you like build in your faith. Um, And then obviously like the biggest thing is like, yeah, figuring out like who you are and who God is throughout it all. Um, and it's just a very, very much of a matter of we want to make sure that Redeemer is a very welcoming place and like you get to be a part of that community, which is a really cool aspect of it as well. So again, like any questions about that or anything, like feel free to, yeah, just uh, email admissions at redeemer.ca. Um, and the other thing is, is that like, it what this is just like, a me thing I prefer to like uh have uh the opportunity to like meet students virtually because it's so different to like actually like get to see them get to interact with them versus like only going over email um so yeah if you ever want to have a virtual meeting like please sign up for one I'm available most days um and I try to like make it at a time that will work for all different time zones so don't worry about like keeping me up at like 3 a.m or anything (laughs) like that I try to keep it at a reasonable time for everyone um so it's not too bad um and then the other thing is is that like we do try to be a little bit more accessible so if you have like a quick like message that you want to send me like I'm also on WhatsApp so I'm more than happy to like message with you if that's easier um for any student as well awesome no thank you those are so many great student uh, student yeah. resources that we offer uh to our international applicants uh th- that being said uh mm-hmm. it is a little bit different for American students um and so mm-hmm. we are gonna start that yeah um let, let's let's maybe start with so if you're in the united states somewhere uh, michigan iowa mm-hmm. texas any of the united states and you heard about redeemer yep. you found us online you know things like that what would be mm-hmm. the first steps for for you as as for that student in america yeah, great question. So again, it's to start an application. Like it's the it's the best thing to do. Um, if you have any questions, like we do have links on our website that you can like directly send us an email as well or a quick like question and we can answer it within a day, which is super nice. Um, typically for American students, like it is free to apply until January 31st. So if you have any like qualms about applying to Redeemer, I would just do it because it's free to apply anyway. So really all we're asking of you is like 20, 30 minutes of your time, like work on your application, write your personal statement, contact your guidance counselor at your school, ask for your official transcripts to be sent to us. It's the same. It's very similar to international students. Um, If you're like a transfer from the U.S., um, so you have attended a college or post-secondary institution, uh, WES is not mandatory. We just do need official transcripts to be sent directly from your institution to Redeemer. Can Um, it come from the student? Easiest way to do it. Yeah, it cannot come from the student. That is really what we're trying to say. Um, The other thing that I wanted to say is that like for an international student to apply for a study permit, it is also a little bit different. So um, this applying for a study permit depends on your citizenship. It does not matter where you are in the world. So for example, if you are holding Chinese citizenship, but you're studying, currently studying in the U.S. and you want to come to Canada, you have to uh, apply for for a study permit online. If you are a US citizen and you are in the United States of America, you can actually apply at the border. So you kind of actually have a different um, way of applying at a port of entry than other other people do. Or, Or if you're a US citizen, you're currently in Germany, and you want to apply, you can also just apply at a port of entry. So what I mean by border and port of entry, I'm using them interchangeably, sorry. It's the yeah, lingo. No, no, no. Um, so it, again, like it's exactly what Zach said earlier, where it's an airport or it can be like a land border crossing. Um, typically, it will take like a little bit longer for you to cross the border if you're going on at a land border. Um, but like, that's OK. It's supposed to take time. 
Um, but again, like you need to make sure that you have the proper documents. So make sure that you have proof of financial support, make sure that you have the final offer admission from Redeemer. Um, make sure that, yeah, you just have, like have all your papers in order. If you needed biometrics, make sure that those are ready to go. Um, yeah, it's just super important to have that, um, ready. Yeah. Right. When you get there. Good. Great. And, and so again, just to reiterate, if you're going to apply at the border, like just before your, your studies start, you need to make sure that you have that final offer of admission and then also um, your bank statements or just proof of financial, financial uh, uh, funds, right? Support. Support. Sorry. That's the word I'm looking for. (laughs) You're all good. (laughs) No, that's great. And then maybe just touch on this a little bit here. Uh, what are some of the benefits of American students coming and studying at Redeemer? Great question. I I think it's always so interesting. Um, American students are a very unique group that we have on campus because you understand like the westernized world a little bit more than like what maybe someone from like Asian culture would. Um, so it's very similar in that regard. It is very interesting that our countries are similar and yet very different all at mm-hmm. the same time. I find that one of the biggest benefits is um, just to broaden your horizons a little bit. And it's also a way, like if you're looking financially, uh, I think that is a huge benefit. So because of our current exchange rate as well, it also reduces the cost. Um, But if you're like looking to come to a university that has like affordable like tuition as well as housing and everything, like we are a great option, especially if you're looking for a Christian university, like at Redeemer, like we really do focus on the Christian perspective. It's not just like an add on to our courses. It's like foundational to everything mm-hmm. that we do. Um, and so if you're really wanting to focus on that, like it is a great way to grow your faith. It is a great way to grow your work experience, your career. Um, it is a great way for you to just like, yeah, get your foot in the door in a lot of different ways um, to make sure that you're actually like prospering. Um, and the really nice thing is, is that we are a fully accredited university. And so it definitely depends on like what workforce you're looking into, but we are recognized in the U.S. as well. Awesome. Well, Annika, we've we've had so many, so much good information in this episode of the Redeemer podcast. Thank you so much for for coming on and sharing your expertise and your knowledge. And I'll just you know remind mm-hmm. any of our listeners if you want more information, check out the links in the description below. Email us at admissions at redeemer.ca. Uh, we'd be happy to put you in contact with mm-hmm. Annika, and uh, especially if you are looking for you know more of that immigration advice and perspective, uh, she's a fantastic resource for mm-hmm. you. And uh, yeah, check out. Yeah, Thanks, absolutely. Um, any any final words for for our international applicants watching this? Don't be afraid to apply. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And yeah, honestly, like, please know that like each of us are praying for every single application that comes through. We're really hoping that you experience God's God's guidance in your life. And we think that Redeemer is a great place. And we're not just biased because we work there. We genuinely do think this. Um, (laughs) We really do think it is a wonderful place um, for people to just grow in their faith and grow in their careers. And yeah, we hope that you get to be a part of our community too. Awesome. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Redeemer podcast. God bless and we'll see you in the next episode.